It's the Two Dudes Reviews podcast. You can find the video version of all of our podcasts online at twodudesreviews.com via our YouTube channel. Neil Sanderson from Three Days Grace. Thank God we didn't start without being on the record recording. Of course. This guy, he's a tech guard sometimes. Today we're working with the Andy setup. It's a Jave and Andy from Two Dudes Reviews with one and only uh, Neil Sanderson. You know, sometimes the bass player or the drummer gets, gets left behind when you have the, uh, the, the really cute, good-looking uh, uh, front people. How do we get so lucky to be able to hang out with a fellow percussionist? I'm, I, I, drums was my first instrument, Andy's as well. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess uh, uh, the other guy, well, Barry's down in Indiana somewhere, so he's he's like somewhere in the woods. Uh, uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I'm around, and, and uh, I've been in this band for 25 years, so maybe that's, I get, I still get the, the workload of, of, of talk, but I, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy the hang. Hey, somebody's got to pick this, the short straw, and this time it was you. Hey, Neil, congratulations. <laughs> You know, um, you guys have got something in common with one of the greatest rock bands of all time, the legendary Van Halen, and the fact that you've been very successful with not one, but two lead singers. Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, uh, we had no idea that we were even in the realm of anything with Van Halen. Uh, We're huge fans, of course. Um, But it was pretty cool to wake up to. I, I remember just like... I was just, I woke up and read like that there was this stat that we shared with them now, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, uh, it's amazing, you know, we've been doing this for a while and it's amazing that so many fans have been on this journey with us and, uh, we don't get too wrapped up in like statistics and numbers and stuff, but, um, to, you know, to have uh, so much support, uh, this far down the line is, is pretty crazy, you know? And, uh, if, to us, we, we consider it to be a journey, you know, that you don't quite know what around what's around the next corner, you know, and, and uh, it's it's kind of, that's part of the fun. Um, so it's just t- to us to see that everybody is, uh, you know, on this journey with us is pretty awesome after all these years. Now, it's interesting to me that, that I, I mentioned the fact that the commonality is the fact they've been successful with two lead singers. Right. And, and the statistician mentions the fact that the other commonality they share with Van Halen is the most number one singles at rock radio of all time. So congratulations on both those things. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I think that just sticking to, uh, you know, staying true to yourselves with the songs that you write, I think that's that's what we've always done. We've always just written, like, you know, just about real things that, that are real to us. And uh, if we can, you know, put that into songs and someone listens to it and it becomes real to them, then that's a pretty cool, powerful connection. How difficult has it been working with, um, now that you've got two brothers in the band, is, the, you know, Brad and Matt, is it, it, they have like a bond now or when the, the sibling rivalry comes around, does people get like, I don't know, they, they, they got to have the brothers butts and then the rest of the band gets their own butts over here. Uh, no, I mean, I think they they fought it out when they were younger, and at Matt t- Matt trains MMA now, so I think Brad is kind of minding his p's and q's because <laughs> uh, he doesn't he doesn't want to get a flurry of punches or something. But uh, no, I, we're all you know we're buddies. We respect each other. I, I think you know you ask any band that's been around for a while, like uh, you know you got it, you got it. You're gonna see the best and the worst of everybody on that bus, and so. And, and include, you know, and so, it, you know, if you want to ask for some slack when you're having a bad day or you've had a little bit too much to drink or whatever, then uh, then you can't be a dick when someone else is uh, having a hard day, you know. And, and I think that it's sounds kind of, you know, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but it is the key of just, uh, you know, giving giving a guy a space and not, you know, because otherwise, yeah, butting heads on the road is, is not fun. Well, and it's yeah, it's got to be tough when you guys are all so close together. Um, you know, one of the funny thing is you just answered one of my questions. Thanks, Jay. But one of the things that I wanted to ask, because I when I when I first heard the mountain, uh, I thought about what a great song for when you're in the gym and when you're training. Um, and I was going to ask who trains uh, the video. Once I saw the video, I saw MMA and and I, I teach martial arts, so it really oh, yeah. spoke to me. And and is so is Matt is Matt the only one that trains? Uh, in in martial arts, yeah, totally. totally. Uh, 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 Barry's more of a gun owner, so he goes that route, I guess, in <laughs> self-defense. <laughs> Target shooting, I mean. Um, 
No, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, Matt actually just got serious about it. And, uh, you know, he flies all over the stage when we're playing live. He's a pretty high energy front man. Um, so I think that helps him a lot. Um, I just, you know, I don't like the notion of being kicked in the head. So I'm just going to stick to the uh, treadmill, you know, <laughs> treadmill. <laughs> I can watch a little docu series or something on my, you know, and not be getting, uh, not be getting need in the face. <laughs> sure, definitely. You, I mean, the drummer has nunchucks right there. They're the only difference between the drumsticks and the nunchucks it's, it's, is there's no. It's actually more like Kali <laughs> stick fighting from the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. So, were you guys big fans of My Darkest Day before Matt came to join Three Days Grace? And and initially, was it just going to be kind of a hey, Adam split like in this weird kind of way? We just need a temporary fill-in until we figure out what the hell we're going to do next. Uh, well, I mean, first question, I mean, you know, Matt is Brad, our bass player's younger brother. So we all grew up together, right? We're from the same town. So when we were, you know, we were watching My, My Dark Days up and coming and having a number one U.S. hit and stuff like that. Porn star dancing. Felt like our, it's our little bro. It's our little bro, you know, uh, making it happen. And uh, reciprocally, you know, when, when Three Days Grace was, we were still a basement garage band. Matt was like the, you know, the kid over in the corner playing with Hot Wheels. You know what I mean? So wow. um, it, we were all that close right from the get-go as, as teenagers and stuff. Like, you know, I, I did some co-writing for My Darkest Days back in the day. Matt did some co-writing on the first Three Days Grace album when he was like 21 years old, you know. Um, so there was always that just that real connection. So, um, you know, but as far as when the, when the day came when we made the transition and we just made the decisions and stuff, it, it all just came like that. Like it was all, you know, un, un, it's been five and a half years, by the way. Uh, it came unexpectedly and we had 30 shows booked with Shinedown that we, you know, we, we, we were going to play. We weren't going to not play. And uh, I think, you know, Brad, and as Brad tells the story, he was just sitting having sushi with Matt when I texted Brad like this is this just took place. And uh, Matt was Brad just kind of said like get your chops going and buddy, are you in? And Matt's just like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and wow. so we, that's literally how it went. And then uh, that was right before Christmas. So we just skipped Christmas cause we didn't have time and cause we had work to do. And we just, uh, Matt, you know, just worked his ass off. And the first show uh, was in front of 8,000 people with shine down co-headliner and just the pyro went off. And it was just like, here we go boys, you know, but, uh, but as I said, this whole experience in, in, from our end is like, is about, you know, is about a journey and like, it's a different chapter and it's, it's, it's sometimes exciting not knowing what's around the corner, like, you know, such is life. Hey, Neil, uh, let me ask you, you know, there, there was the, the big Sam and Dave tour. Is there any chance in hell that one day we will see the Matt and Adam tour? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. You, uh, yeah, you might see an Elvis tour too. I don't know. <laughs> it's like Eagles hell freezes over maybe, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. So hey, you, you guys don't keep in touch at all. No, no. I mean, you know, I, I would, I, there's, it's been five and a half years and we've kind of just been like on this trajectory this way. And so, um, you know, focus on, focus on the thing that we wake up and create every day and anything else is, to, is there, is anyone else's, uh, you know, uh, prerogative. It's good. You seem, you seem really focused. Uh, again, on, on the present, which I just read something the other day about, um, and it was Alan Watts, of all people, uh, made Love a that. comment um, about how everyone is focused on either the past or the future. And for that reason, none of us really live in the present. And it seems like you really are in the present. You are you are right here, right now, and, and, and on that journey and on that path. And, and what happened in the past is irrelevant. And no one, none of us know what the future holds. Uh, is that pretty true? Yeah, no, I, I think you nailed it on the head. I mean, I mean, it, you know, and I and I think to take it one step further, like, you know, in a, I, I guess things like anxiety and depression have always been there in society. Maybe it's just spoken about, open now more than ever. But, um, you know, and, and but I read something interesting the other day, just talking about like what it is and what it isn't, and really like, anxiety is all about like just fretting about the future, being being in the future, and. and you know, depression can be sort of like living in the past of, of, of pain, of pain, painful situations in the past and stuff. And so it's weird that those two things that are like, you know, the topic of, of conversation today, that that's like epidemic kind of stuff. Everyone's taken everything for anxiety and depression and stuff like that. It's really, uh, it, I'm asking the question, I'm no psychiatrist, but is that like maybe dwelling on the past and the future more than just kind of like being in the present? That's super insightful. I mean, no, no, honestly, I've never really thought it in that context. And it kind of kind of leads into the Outsider, right? Uh, the new album is Outsider, yeah. right? And uh, the song, 
the, the title track or the, the, the outsider. Um, I was just listening to that the other day and it kind of speaks to a lot of what's going on today, uh, especially in schools with bullying and, and, and that sort of stuff. Was that present in your mind when you guys wrote that song? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think uh, really one of the things we talked about was just uh, modern society, you know, this modern society of just having so many things rapid fire uh, at your consciousness. Um, and so many things are designed to influence you, like influence what, what you should buy or what you should believe or what you should get behind or what you should revolt against or be offended by, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, but it's a lot of it's like, prefab design to influence you to move in a certain direction and I think Outsider talks about wanting to take a giant step back from all that sort of chaos and influence and sensory overload so that you can take look at it from a distance and make sense of it instead of, instead of having it beating you over the head until you go crazy. Cool. Hey Neil again, congratulations on everything. I wanted to show you kind of our surroundings here. We, we want to thank uh, the folks over here at the Sierra Gold in Reno, Nevada, we're in the little VIP, like the high rollers room over here, and they got cool. you know, wine cellars back. I'm getting a little hungry. Maybe a, a glass of. Are you a wine drinker at all? Uh, I yeah, I like it. Uh, you know, uh, I like wine, beer, uh, gin, vodka. Nice. Uh, oh, oh <laughs> uh, well. When do you yeah. come to Reno again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soon. I just. It's funny you say. Uh, you know, because I just. I was. I was on time. I wasn't late for this session here, yeah. but uh, I. I my brother rolled through town. I live in a small town, and he's and he basically texts me like, "Are you? We call it a speed pint up here. Are you up for a speed pint?" So I went and had like a. I was, I was out and back in like nine minutes to the little corner pub, and I had a speed pint with my brother. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, can, can you show us? I see a guitar behind you and the uh, microphone there. Can you show us? Is, is this yeah. your home studio or what? Yeah, yeah, no, I just got a little setup. I can show you. It's the snow stop, but there's been a. It's been. It's a. It's a spring snowfall today, which yeah. is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I've got a little setup here. Um, if you're a tech geek, I basically these are just like knee, uh, a Neve preamp and and compressor. Totally. Um, just so that if basically if we're in here like messing around with vocals or just uh, putting down acoustic guitars and stuff. Um, if you ha have it running through a good vocal chain, then a lot of the stuff that ends up on the record is like the original, you know, if Matt and I are just sitting here messing around with something and he grabs a microphone and lays something down cool, as long as we capture it properly, like there's so much of that that ends up on our records, you know? So we try to just like, instead of using the voice memo, if we have an idea, we put it in properly to like Neve outboard gear whenever, but to make it sound good. You know? Yeah. I would imagine, um, Manny, you know, they say it takes a, you know, a lifetime to, you can take a lifetime to make your first record, but then you get on this cycle of you know a new album every 18 months. I could imagine that it would be difficult at your level of the game to break the mold and do something that you haven't done. And for whatever reason, we you know we talked to a Tyler from Theory of a Dead Man a few months back, and he had talked about I've done every rock riff out there, and now I wanted to do something different. What do you guys do to kind of break that mold and get out of that funk? Uh, well, I think again making sure we're always documenting everything um, yeah. because we've, we've also damaged our short-term memory over the years. <laughs> uh, that's common. Uh, but um, yeah, just kind of uh, not being afraid to, to like to go down the line of some on um, something that feels weird, yeah. I think is one thing, you know, I'm talking music here still. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. Like just being able to, uh, you know, not try, try not to give, try not to, create boundaries for yourself and if yeah. it's weird just kind of see it out because sometimes you know that turns out to be the coolest stuff um, well and then yeah just yeah i i noticed that uh um, actually dave said an album every 18 months but in reality for you guys it's really been an album every three years is that planned not really i mean it has kind of a lot to do with like uh you know we're we're uh we generally want to go out and tour for two years and uh, it's been like you know it's a, it's it's a great problem to have that we you know we have a we have a, you know a lot of spots overseas that we can go and do a, like full full on tours and uh, that's really opened up for us over, over the last while just um, you know the one great good thing about the internet is uh, is just it's broken down the borders for exposure to music so you know we'll go to these far places in Siberia eastern Russia and 
these towns that we, you know nobody really speaks English and stuff, and they still know like every single Three Days Grace lyric, you know. Yeah, we so forgot to to try to get out. It's been crazy. It's it's nuts and like, uh, but you know, so to get to all those places and tour everywhere it takes. You got to kind of commit two years to do that, you know. And then we generally do. I think we generally do take about a year to to create a record from start to finish, from like just jamming it out, writing it on acoustic, me- messing with it, making demos, rewriting, throwing stuff out, all that kind of stuff. Take and and then go into the studio and nail it down. It takes about a year. So I think that's how the three year thing is happens to continue are you are you ready to go out on a uh, on a tour that is that is designed to be as crazy as a, a prophets of rage and and uh and avenge sevenfold tour yeah it's still like it's um you know we, we haven't really played since september so looking at the schedule now is is it it is a bit daunting it's like whole like <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna be there. So, uh, so like you know, you just put down the beer and like get on the treadmill for a little bit. <laughs> right, <laughs> it feels more possible. But yeah, you know what? The thing is, is uh, those those July shows, those July American festivals, they can they can be hot, man, and humid, and uh, so yeah, I think yeah, you got to prepare your body, or else you're in for a rude awakening. Wow. Okay, that's cool. I mean, it's interesting when I so talking about training, right? You be playing the mountain and get on the treadmill, and you're ready for the for the for the summer, actually, summer tour. Yeah, really brutal. So, yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna you're, be you're about ready to show us one of your babies back there. It looks like a Schechter Diamond series, yeah. maybe back there. But what, no, what were you bringing up? That, that's is, that's a that's the '79 uh, Gibson Les Paul Special. It's awesome. Wow. It's, and yeah, like I'm I'm known like uh, people that look at this, they 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 refer to me as a guitar owner because I can't really, like. This is for shredders, and this guitar is for a shredder, and I cannot. I'm, you know, I'm more of a hack than a shredder, I guess. <laughs> you know, listen, Neil. Next time you guys are in town, and and I don't know if I was able to because we've had such a long relationship over the last twenty years um, with with the band and, and playing here in Reno at the Rock Station. You know, and back when you guys were playing just in like the small clubs, I don't know if I ever took you guys over to uh, Bizarre Guitar, Greg Golden's. Uh, uh, vault downstairs. Does that ring any bells? Uh, you know what? I I'd have to ask our guitar player if, if okay. he if he uh, he probably he knows every guitar shop, every vintage shop out there. This place, Greg has got a Fender Strat with a serial number of zero 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 three. I mean, he's got a multi million dollar collection of guitars right here in Reno. So. Next time you guys come through the area, come close to the area, we got to hook up. We can go into a speed pipe and go and check out some of the stuff. Because it's not just guitars. You've got other stuff there, too. You you dig it. Yeah. Yeah, man, absolutely. And I like collecting old stuff, too. I, I like uh, some of the – like just, again, some of it's just to, to, to look at and shine up, you know. But uh, I love vintage gear. In fact, I'll show you something right now. That This this divulged something here. This, this pedal is like a huge um, – it's been a huge part of our sound on all of our records since, since like since the get go. Um, we we've used it. Uh, Gavin, our, who produced our first album, and was involved in this album and produced our last album too. Kind of got us into the sound, and we just kept it. This is a Boss Chorus Ensemble, like like old. And we what we use it for is we use it for this uh, like for the chorus, and then but there's a gain on it, and we put a Wurlitzer. We play a Wurlitzer through this. Nice. And for some, and yeah, an old school world, analog Wurlitzer um, through this, and you gain the hell out of it. And in a lot of like a lot of our he- chunky riffs and stuff, we put it gives it this kind of analog Rizzy uh, sound that's like it's been on every one of our records. That's very cool. That's cool. We we had a, a realistic um, little keyboard that was like a half keyboard from the seventies way back when. That, uh, wow. That Rush used on uh, YYZ. That we, right? yeah. <laughs> well, and it's funny you, you're showing all these guitars. You play Yamaha drums. Has it always been Yamaha? Yeah, yeah. And it just kind of it started. Just my buddy was the Canadian rep for Yamaha, and uh, and I love. They're, they're just the consistency of the the Japanese drum engineering is insane. They're always like just you know right right up there. And uh, but I just it started because my buddy was working there. Well, now he's he's moved up the ladder to like, he's like the international, like, uh, you know, rep for all of, you know, 
practice worldwide. So, uh, so now like when we play Moscow, I come out of the dressing room, I'm like, Sean, what are you doing here, bro? <laughs> and then we go for speed. Time. <laughs> it's fantastic. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so we just, he's, he's my bro and uh, he's, he treats us really well. Awesome. Very cool. Neil, congratulations on Outsider, man. And thank you so much. And we've been hanging out here bullshitting for 20 minutes. And I uh, really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. I hope you have a, a, a fun weekend and, and uh, not, nothing but pleasurable experiences and safety out on the road. Hope to see you out on the West Coast. Yeah, listen, uh, look up the Avenged Sevenfold Tour. We're going to be out there. Uh, come out to a show, man. And we'll, uh, we'll hang. We'll give you a shout. Love to do that. All right, All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yes, see you then. Oh, my God.